guest is Basho or Rafael Span from Triple C. They are contesting and uh, Triple C for country by constituents. But Basho, now there's an issue of uh, double candidates coming from uh, Chabang Kem, Chabang's Kem, and uh, you as well from Triple C. How will we handle those? And also, how is the mood on the ground in terms of campaigning? Are uh, people not confused to say oh, there's Triple C Chabang candidate and there's Basho Rafael Triple C again? Are uh, people not confused about that? Uh, well, of course, uh, we all know that the double candidates are being put by the enemy uh, so as to, 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 to divide our people. But what I'm glad is that the people of Country Park know who they voted for on the 23rd of August. You know, yesterday I was doing my first door-to-door -door campaign and uh, I can tell you that our people are now divided into three groups. The first group of people will tell you that we are clear we know who you are. And then the second group of people, they were, they were telling me, look, what is really happening? Who is this guy that is recalling you? What is happening? Why are we going to an election? But after having a conversation with that kind of a group, they then understand and say, oh, oh okay. And then you have the last group of people at this hour who will tell you, what matota. We're tired of elections. We can't be subjected to that. So now it's up to me as the incoming member of parliament for culture but to make sure that, number one, we educate our people and make them know what Izanu PF is taking their lives for granted. Izanu PF is taking our people for granted because I say so because as I'm talking to you right now, Brighton, Zanu PF government will spend 5 million U.S. dollars in these by-elections. 5 million U.S. dollars in by-elections of, uh, of nine constituencies. So it, 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 it's something which we must discuss it and make our people, you know, be aware of that. So that's how the mood is on the ground. But uh, we look forward for a victory because uh, our people know their leaders and our people know who they voted for. On the issue of double candidate, look, I'm not worried about uh, 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 the double candidate because this double candidate that was put by Sengezo, it's a person who was a double candidate for, for, for Council and Tandoyenkosi and Jov. And this very person lost as a double candidate despite that, uh, you know, he was favored because in terms of the arrangement of the ballot, the person was on top, but he still lost. So this is a, 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 a serial loser in my case, and uh, it's, it's, it's sad because Avant Wagiti, they are being taken for granted, just being subjected to election. But uh, I'm not worried about the double candidates. I'm worried about uh, the lives of our people in Kautbach. Well, thank you so much for responding to that. Now, um as a young leader who has been affected by these recalls, you know, what do you think about this law, about recalls? And if you are elected back into parliament, what would, you, what would be your input towards that? Um, thank you very much for that question. I think it's an important question. I think we must understand why Section 129K was put in place in the first place. You know, in my view, that particular uh, 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 section of the Constitution, it was meant to cripple the, 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 the opposition because if you look at when it was put in place and who has been using it and how has it been used, it has been affecting mostly uh, members of parliament, councillors in the opposition because it, it, it's not so clear because as it stands, that law will tell you that when the party writes to, 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 to parliament that a, a certain member of parliament ceases to be a member of a political party, and then that person uh, uh, automatically is recalled from parliament. So the law just says, if the political party, it's not so clear if it says the president, the champion in chief, the SG, and, 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 and so forth. And why am I saying it's meant to, be, to, 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 to cripple the opposition you know, you, you have a situation where all speaker of parliament will say, look, Mina, I just read letters as they come, regardless of who they come from, regardless of what has been uh, 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 happening. So these are the laws that we should deal with in parliament because they undermine the power of the people. They undermine taxpayers' money. They undermine, you know, 
the electorate. They undermine it democracy because you cannot tell me Uguti, if someone was voted by over you know six thousand people in a constituency, but a person can be dismissed by a mere letter, not just a letter, but a letter with, with, with you know with even uh, spelling errors and 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 so forth. So we need to come up with a mechanism where 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 when we say a member of parliament is no longer fit for parliament, there must be an input of voters. The same way we were put in parliament by the voters uh, uh, representing a, a, a political party, we must also come up with a mechanism where when one is being recalled, voters must also be included as well as political parties. We can't have a situation where our people deploy us in parliament, but then, you know, you have uh, uh, one side recalling. So I think we need to look into that, put our ears together and see how we can uh, deal with that issue as a collective. Well, thanks so much, Pashto, for responding to Let's go to our first speaker there. I see Bambofu just joined us. Good morning, Baba Chief. Baby Jimbofu. Uh, good morning, Brighton. Good morning, Nonsansa and everybody on the space. San Bonani, no, okay? Uh, also, I would like to, to send my greetings to the MP, uh, Honorable MP. I would say it's the Honorable MP because he was chosen by the people anyway. Whatever is going around, yes, in his story. Uh, so I, I think my question to, to him is, uh, uh, since it seems that there is no sight in end to these recalls and destabilizations uh, going around after the uh, uh, twenty three August uh, elections where they were elected. Uh, to me, in as much as I, I, I analyze the thing is our courts are compromised because right now they rule uh, in favor of the other side. The next time they change, they rule in favor of the other side, of which I can foresee a circus that is going to take a, a long time to, to be playing from now. So what I, I just want to need to to know from the the, the MP is uh, that uh, is there anything in place since a uh, Sadak uh, made his deliberations and pronounced it clearly that uh, these elections were 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 flawed and therefore the outcome of the election uh, is not what exactly uh, reflects what the people of Zimbabwe voted for. And in consideration, again, if you look at these illegal by-elections, because I foresee a, a situation whereby it's going to be by-election after by-election, so is there anything in place to say, should these uh, Satak elders come and make their final deliberation to say maybe there is plan A or plan B, or they just leave the issue uh, in the hands of the Zimbabweans? Uh, where do we go from now? Thank you, Brighton. Thank you, Nonsal, and everybody else. Thanks so much, Wampo, for that. I can go ahead, Pasha, and respond to Wampo with this question. Uh, thank you very much, Wampo, uh, and uh, good morning to you. Well, uh, like I said, that uh, our country, our people are subjected into an election mode, and uh, it's not uh, benefiting anyone except uh, uh, the oppressor. Well, we have put in place mechanisms as the Citizens' Coalition for Change because at first, uh, 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 when we filed our papers as candidates for Citizens' Coalition for Change, the imposter, this very guy who, who, who is trying to recall us, attempted to, 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 to stop us, but he failed because, uh, 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 as I'm talking to you right now, we've taken him to court. We are suing him of, uh, you know, fraudulently using triple C locals and so forth. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's looking good. And I can tell you that, yet we've seen that we were, we were, we were going to be re, uh, recalled again. We're not going to file our paper as a citizens' coalition for change. And I can assure you that we are, we are, we are in full control of the party. And uh, going forward, we're not going to experience uh, more recalls in terms of uh, what is happening. So we are correcting the situation. And I can tell you, we're not going to experience any more recalls in terms of uh, 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 the court order which was given uh, yesterday, particularly to the Speaker of Parliament, Minister of Local Government, and all the parties uh, 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 involved. And then on the issue that we, 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 we are continuing being on the election, I want to challenge everyone in this platform. Governance in Zimbabwe, development in Zimbabwe, is not an issue that we should solely leave to us as politicians. Yes, we play our part 
as Citizens Coalition for Change, led by President Chamisa. But we are at a stage where every progressive Zimbabwean must come together and uh, we, we, we deal with the elephant in the room. We are all affected here. We are, you know, we are, we are all subjected to poverty. We can't do business. There is no water. There is no electricity. It's, it's issues right across all sectors, you know. So we are at a time where we should not only leave things to President Chamisa alone or to us and the Triple C or to, to, to the parliamentarians only. So uh, let's all come together and make sure that we deliver the Zimbabwe we want. Like we've always said that it's for everyone. But uh, in my party words, we'll be telling you that, no, we're in charge of the party. We're correcting the situation and uh, you will not expect any further recourse. Thanks so much, Pasho, for that response. Pasho, you got uh, in the August 23 elections, you got uh, almost over 8,000 votes, right? Yeah. Do, you, do you see, maybe in terms of the ground now, you're when the ground now, you're gauging in terms of campaigning for December 9. Do you think 8,000 people vote for you again now, uh, looking at the people, an issue of our party, people are being uh, are confused of the election, and also they're saying, we voted for you, but you're being recalled. What's happening? Do you think you're going to retain those 8,000 plus votes again in the December 9 by election? Um, I want to bring you to understand one thing, uh, Brighton. I got 8,000 votes when people started voting at 3 p.m. So you can imagine, yet the people of Couchback started voting at 7 a.m. How much votes uh, was I going to get? So I'm very much positive that, in fact, I can get more numbers than what I got on the 23rd of August because the election which we had on the, on the 23rd of August, it started... Uh, the first polling station to vote in Couchback, particularly in, uh, in, in 115 and where I voted in Couchback Secondary, we started voting at uh, uh, 17 past uh, 3 in the afternoon. So uh, 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 in as much as uh, by elections, they are normally characterized with low voter turnout. But I think we, 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 we should be able to have uh, 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 between 40 to 60 percent turnout in that in this particular by election, I would love to believe. And I think the people of Couchback will come in their numbers because, uh, as it stands right now, in terms of the voters' roll, I think Couchback is over 27,000 registered uh, voters. So we are very positive in terms of uh, the turnout, and we hope that Zimbabwe Electoral Commission is not going to do its skimishes of trying to play around with the ballot and make sure that the ballot comes late. Uh, 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 everything being constant and equal if the election starts at 7 a.m if there is no intimidation if everything is available we expect uh, voter turnout to be to be to be a little bit better yeah well thank you for responding to that question now let me take freelance good morning freelance yeah good morning Osanta. good morning Dow. uh philip spander here um um firstly i would like to say i i hope you 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 win again because we we did a lot for you to you know campaign but i want to ask a question to you um how much did you uh, spend during your campaign before or on that uh, last election and in your swing of uh, um usenzo um are you going to include the the monies you used to campaign because if you are successfully in suing him, what sort of things are you going to sue him? And my second question is, um, when we listened to him uh, talking about the um, the calling of that uh, Tafumane, he said it was a mistake. So, what do you think the family of Tafumane should do about that? Because if that uh, Tafumane was not called, probably Tafumane could have been um, alive today. And what lessons have you learned about this door-to-door -door, uh, campaign? Uh, since they ad adapted tough money since I was doing that. Thank you, uh, uh, Tao. Thank you so much, Fulansa, for that. Uh, qu for those questions, you can go, go ahead, Pashu, and respond to uh, Fulansa. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Fulansa, uh, uh, and uh, good morning, uh, Tao. Uh, I'll start with the one of, uh, of how much I've spent in, in, in campaign. Look, my campaign, it was, uh, of course, it was monetary, but uh, it was owned by the citizens. We, I, have, I haven't taken much stock in terms of how much we spent because it was uh, not solely uh, on me, particularly for that particular uh, campaign. And things will come in terms of material, human resources and everything. And then uh, when it comes to the particular case, 
to say a low moon to low or colliers or patala malin and so forth. I think our lawyers are hanging that, and I'm not at a position where I can comment uh, around that. But all I can tell you is that um, um, we're doing all the best we can as the citizens' movement to make sure that uh, uh, we punish because people think that people think that rebellion pays, people think that destroying the people's project we are patala. So we're making sure that this imposter who is taking our people for granted will pay for that. And we're also sending a clear message to those who think that it will be easy to destroy the people's project. That's all that I can say. And then coming to the issue of abductions, I become very emotional when I talk about abductions because myself, I'm a victim of abductions. You will remember that in 2019, my house in Couch Park was raided and my father was abducted as the uh, uh, suspected state security agents were looking for me. My dad was beaten. And, uh, you know, Two times my house has been uh, uh, raided to a point that I had to leave the country and then uh, 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 come back. So I know what it means because uh, losing, for us in the movement, we lost a leader, we lost a champion, but there's a family which also lost, a, you know, a father, a breadwinner, a church lost, a pastor, you know, and it's not good for, 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 for our democracy to continue losing people on account of politics. And I have to stress out this point. We lost champion Tafumane as a result of illegal recalls. We lost our champion as a result of an imposter who recalled a member of parliament for Mavuku uh, Tafara, including myself. And what's more worrying is that they recalled a member of parliament for Mavuku Tafara and then Sengezo fails to field a candidate after that. And when he fails to field a candidate, you know, whatever happens, we lose a champion out of that. What is that? We don't need such things as a society. And I want to send a very clear message to, 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 to the oppressor, to the regime, that look, you don't have monopoly over violence. You don't have monopoly over the people's, of, over the people's lives. And it's a really, a really, a really bad because we can't have a situation where your involvement in politics, your involvement in, 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 in opposing or having a different view with the government will result you uh, 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 in death. You know, that is bad and that is uncalled for. And uh, I keep telling people that in Zimbabwe we break records. Where else in the world have you ever seen members of parliament that are recalled 39 days when they're in office except in Zimbabwe? Where else in the world have you ever seen that uh, uh, a person recalls and failed to field a candidate and it results in death except in Zimbabwe? So it's just a normal this appetite uh, 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 of killing people, it, it's so sad. And I still go back to my point that we are experiencing a modernized Kukura Wundi in this country. Thank you so much, Pasho, for that response. Guys, if you're just joining us, our, our guest this morning is uh, Pasho Rifle Spander, the uh, Triple C aspiring member of parliament for Couch Pies. Fine for me to say aspiring when he was in parliament and then he was recalled by now as a contesting again. So fine, that's the poor of our politics in Zimbabwe, not like that. But let's move on with our, 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 our show this morning. Pasho, I know I'm, I come from Couch Park as well. I know you've been talking about the issue of uh, putting you now, Couch Park is now three of us, right? Three councillors and one MP. You spoke about the issue of putting together the water detention fund and the CTF to do one project. Speak to us about that issue there. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Brighton. Our view and our submission was that since councillors get uh, what, what we call ward retention fund, 3% of the money uh, which the residents pay in council, it's retained to, uh, to the residents, where the residents will decide what they want to do with that money. And then as a member of parliament, you get constituents development fund. So we then said, Instead of doing parallel pro, uh, parallel programs to say the MP is working, going this direction and the councillor is going that direction, why not put together those resources, identify what is a priority that our people need in Couch Park? Because Couch Park is so unique that it has its own problems, you know, compared to, 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 to other constituencies. And I'm glad that we had, uh, we had managed to put in place uh, what we called the Constituents Coordinating Committee. Uh, 
you know, from different sectors, people with disabilities, young people, people from churches, uh, you know, different civil society organizations, so that we decide, Ubuti, what is it that we do a culture park with the little that we have? And that was going to bring more transparency. Our people were going to be very much aware to say, look, MPU led two cents and uh, is doing so much in two cents here. Who councillor is bringing in three cents here, and they are doing this. So we're trying to cultivate a culture of complementing each other before we even look of any other uh, 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 help. And uh, when we get back to 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 to, to Parliament, we we'll definitely implement that because. Uh, my last engagement with Parliament, they'd say that uh, CDF is coming in January, and uh, so we're in the process of uh, making sure that uh, we put in place, you know, the constitution of the of the of the of the CDF and 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 and, and everything. Yeah, so that's it around uh, the issue of CDF and water retention fund. Okay, thank you so much for responding to that question. Now I'll take another question. Uh, Boss Salani, good morning. Good morning, on Line. Good morning, Brighton. Uh, good to see you, uh, Leader Pasho. Uh, good to see you. Uh, I just wanted to quickly ask. Um, uh, unfortunately, I was I wasn't able to congratulate you when you won. Uh, you know the previous elections before the recalls. But uh, my question to you is this: uh, Obviously, you're campaigning now, so that means that you're going to need money. And what we've seen is that Chabangu has uh, basically uh, sort of shown people, uh, or should I say, those institutions that are responsible an account, a bank account that says triple C on it. Now, can you confirm whether triple C and Nelson Chamisa has got a bank account or you're going to do what you were doing in the previous elections, which is uh, to ask people for donations and so forth? And how transparent and accountable are those processes? Are, are people's money safe? Do you, you, you know, there needs to be a lot more work done there. And um, my other question would be, now that the High Court has come through uh, with the decision that they made, um, are you still believing that the courts are captured? Because it seems to be, um, you know, when the court decisions are favorable to Triple C, everything is okay in paradise. Uh, when it's not uh, favorable to Triple C, um, everybody else uh, captured institutions, captured judicial systems. And also... Every, for everything that happens, there's always bl blame that has to be taken by Triple C itself. So this Chabangu issue, is Triple C also acknowledging the fact that possibly strategic ambiguity is what led Chabangu to exist and cause uh, the problems that is caused today? Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, well, thank you both for those questions. You can go ahead and respond, uh, Pasho. <laughs> Thank you very much, boss, and uh, greetings to you, and uh, thanks for those uh, 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 questions. Well, I'll start with the one for fans. Look, uh, Triple C didn't start to exist in 2023. We formed or we founded Triple C in 2022, and when we founded Triple C, we, 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 we won by elections, we got 19 members of parliament. And I want to stress out uh, 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 this point. From that time of by-elections last year in 2022, we have been managing resources and we have been accountable to our people and we have been transparent. So to say that Triple C doesn't have a bank account or it has a bank account, it's, 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 it's uh, in my view, it's irrelevant. Why? Because you cannot tell me that a party which fielded 210 members of parliament candidates and over a, 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 a 1,000 uh, councillors is failing to manage its finances. So I can tell you that our books, our finances within the party, they are well catered for, and there is transparency. If you ask anyone who has made a contribution in terms of uh, uh, funding the Triple C, the World Wishers and so forth, we have always managed our finances uh, properly. And then coming to me to say that am I right? Look, we knew these things. I once posted here on Twitter that uh, 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 we are always ahead. Uh, 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 when they're on page three or on page five, actually, we have the detector's manual. When they filled the double candidates in August, we knew that sometime when, when we get into parliament, they will attempt to do the recourse. So to say that uh, we, we shift the blame, I'm now coming to the issue of courts. Well, we all know how our courts works. I personally I can state it here and now without fear or favor. Our, our judicial system is, is captured. 
That's a fact. You don't need to be a politician to debate that or what. But we all know. Where else in the world except in Zimbabwe have you ever seen that, you know, the High Court gives an order and the whole Speaker of Parliament decides to go ahead with the recourse. And then you want me to come here and say that we have a clean judicial system. I mean, we're taking our people for granted. It's even said because it's not only affecting our politics. And remember, when our politics is not doing very well, it cripples our economy, it cripples the lives of our people, it cripples development, and it cripples even the social life of our people. That's how ZANU, you know, is has is, is reduced our 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 our, our <laughs> country to be. And then to speak on this imposter who, who claims to be the Secretary General. Look, Triple C has no position of Secretary General. We don't, and we have never had such a position. That position is found in ZANU PF and other political parties. You know, that imposter, he, 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 the writing is on the wall that he was brought by 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 by, by ZANU to come and destroy, you know, the, 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 the votes of the people and 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 everything. So speaking about the bank account which Sengez Ochabang based on that le- on that letter which was circulating on social media. I am challenging the relevant bank, which Sengiz or claims he has opened an account, to prove to us how they accredited that person to be legitimate or to be to be good enough to open a bank account. Yeah, we seem to have lost our case there, but sure, can't hear you for my end. Uh, yes, but sure, there, please, I do again sure, try you, to... Particularly yeah. in this platform, you don't keep your money in the banks. As soon as your money is in the bank, you withdraw it, because already you don't trust... How much more when the banks now are now are now found to be to be to be to be you know to be a part and parcel of these illegal things it's bad and it's all written on 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 who is doing it and uh, i mean everyone can see that this is the hand of zanu pf thank you very much thank you so much Pasho, for that Pasho, but maybe as a follow-up for what pastor was speaking about the issue of the captured courts and so on you're also saying the courts are captured we are part of the triple c 15 mps uh, who went to court, uh, who also banned, I guess, during the nomination court from participating in the elections. You guys went to court and won that court case, that's number one. Again, yesterday, we saw again yesterday, uh, the, winning again another court case whereby the high court interdict was supposed to stop the things which challenged the calls. What do you make of that? Our courts captured in Zimbabwe, looking at Triple C has been winning other court cases and also losing other court cases. Our courts captured in Zimbabwe. Uh, when we say courts are captured, uh, Brighton, it doesn't necessarily mean that, uh, 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 therefore, we are doing away with the courts. What do I mean by that? Was Zimbabweans, we exist in Zimbabwe. We have identified a problem to say that courts are captured. So while we identify that, we don't only complain. But we are also going to those courts so that we keep exposing them. Because when we say courts are captured while we are, we are away, it, it doesn't make sense. But we go to those courts because as a party, we believe in justice. As a party, we believe in the rule of law. We go there as citizens, as a movement which believes in justice. But because they are captured, they then prove us right to say, look, these courts are what are captured. And I'm sure... Most of you here can agree with us that a lot of uh, uh, judgments and so forth, you can literally say that this judgment was, you know, was politically motivated. So we will not stop going to courts because we want to keep exposing the regime. We want to keep showing the people that, look, these courts are captured with the hope that they will change. You know, that's another strategy. That's another way of trying to fight and make sure that you put enough and necessary political pressure until it's right. We're in a struggle here. We will not tire. We will not go back. We will keep pushing. We will keep going there. We will keep exposing them. And that's why, uh, 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 you know, we, 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 we go to, 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 to these courts. That's it. Well, interesting. Uh, thank you for responding to that question, uh, Pasho. I'll take another question. Good morning, City. 
Good morning, my bigs. Good morning, guys, guys. Good morning, Bryce. And thank you guys for allowing us this platform. So my question is, um, first, perhaps it's a statement, really, that um, in all of this, Triple C somehow doesn't seem to be taking the responsibility to say that their strategic ambiguity failed the people because they were actually warned um, way ahead. But this, as it may be, that already um, Zanu PF is doing it all is shenanigans to actually stifle democracy in our country and our commiserations because uh, Dao Pasho, you were elected by the people and, um, of course, you deserve to be in that position. But the mere fact that you have gone for the by-elections means that somehow, somehow you've accepted uh, the status quo, the, the judicial uh, system of the country and the fact that the by-elections have been put there lawfully, albeit unlawfully, I don't know now. But will you accept it if you lose? Because from 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 the previous experiences, last elections, sorry, 2018, we had the by-elections. ZANU-PF didn't have any seat in Bulawayo. But after the by-elections, we saw the entrance of Umoti, purely because people, had, you know, we had devoted ap- apathy and people really are losing interest because Every time we seem to actually give um, uh, advice to Triple C, it seems like they want to centralize everything to Nelson Chamisa. And it's really difficult to actually participate with Triple C in um, when we don't see, you say it, um, you know, Triple C members um, are accountable. The question that I have is to who if you have no structure? We have all. To who, if the, the members, we don't have register or anything, who who is who, who are the leaders accountable to? Um, but Nyabong. So, Mbuzwami, what if you lose, would you accept Dao? Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, uh, CT, for that. Yeah. Oh, Brighton was now I'm shocked. shocked now. <laughs> yeah, she's been called my big. Uh, yeah, I'm Oh, all right. Interesting. Yeah. Family supporting a family. <laughs> but sure, we can go ahead and respond to those questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, and uh, uh, greetings to you as well. Uh, well, I'm, I'm 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 very much positive. I'm not looking at uh, at, uh, at 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 losing this election, but uh, my stance has always been this: I'm one person who has always been advocating for fairness. I'm one person who has always been advocating for you know for transparency and 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 everything. Yeah. So I'm not in a position to say if things do not go my way, therefore it's a null and void. If the people of Couchback feel like uh, 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 the 39 days where I've been in Parliament, I didn't do very well, then I don't deserve to be a member of Parliament. Look, I respect the will of the people, and uh, you must understand that. We, we when the, the question around by elections is not whether I win or not, but the question should be should we have these by elections or not? Because these are just uh, uh, they were not supposed to be there. Like I told you, that uh, is the Zambia government is going to spend five million US dollars of taxpayers' money in these by elections. So the debate should be centered on do we need these by elections as a country? Looking at what we were in election in August. We're taking our people for granted, and it's ZANU PFR, which is uh, which is uh, which is uh, 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 which is which is doing that. So we we we, we then uh, uh, take it as, as 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 it comes. And another thing, why some other people will say that uh, why are we participating in these by elections? And, and and so look, we're dealing with animals here. We're dealing with a detector. We're dealing with people who don't really care about the lives of our people, and we cannot. Let them, you know, gain, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 seeds just like that out of abuse. We will not, we will not uh, uh, allow Zanu to abuse our people just like that. You see, I'm forgetting the, the other question which you did us. Maybe if you can just remind me. Um, it was more of about, you know, Triple C not taking responsibility of his strategic ambiguity, ambiguity that it has failed and it failed the electorate. It seems like um, Triple C would not take any responsibility at all of anything that has gone wrong or perhaps to change or improve as a party. That's all. All right. Yes. Um, we always take responsibility of, 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 of what we did. The first one, you, 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 you remember 
when uh, President Shamisa was speaking about the candidate selection process, he did admit that, look, this was our first time doing this thing. There were shortfalls here and there. We are still coming up. And that on its own is taking responsibility of, uh, of what uh, uh, has been happening uh, in the political party. And I want to dismiss something in this platform. It's not true to say that uh, we don't have structures. The fact that people are not away of how we operate doesn't mean that we don't have structures. We have our cluster leaders across Zimbabwe, go everywhere from Cholocho to Maswingo, from Zwimba, you know, to Mpoenzi. We have structures, we have cluster leaders, and they are there. So where we differ with the regime, we cannot have our enemy telling us to have a structure the same way they have their structure. And that's why I said in the Triple C, we don't have a Secretary General, but we have. We, 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 we do our administration properly. So we have structures. Myself, I sit in the National Youth Task Force of the Citizens Coalition for Change. That's a structure. We, we, we do have the Task Force for Women. We do have our Change Champion in Chief. We do have our organizer. You all know our spokesperson, including the deputy spokesperson. And that's a structure. So to say that our strategy hasn't worked, it's not true. Why do I say so? We got... A, 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 a 73 seats out of 210 in terms of six results. But we got more than that, but Zex decided to give us 73 out of 210. And I can tell you, if you ask anyone who has run a political party, it's not easy to field candidates in all the 210 constituencies if you don't have a structure. We fielded our candidates across all the 210 constituencies in Zimbabwe. We fielded, uh, 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 I think, over 90% council candidates. It's not possible when you don't have a structure. It's not possible when you are not organized. But we did that under the capable and able leadership of uh, uh, President Chamisa with the entire uh, uh, leadership. So we know how we work. If you go to communities, people will tell you that, look, like how to park a line in lay, ulita utumulua. You go to Mzarabani, they will tell you, no, 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 in this village, our leader is so and so. You go to Cholocho and say, Katlapaku Growth Point Lay, who is in charge? Our people know their leaders. And it's working for us. And uh, to say that it has not worked, I mean, uh, 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 you cannot say it's not working when we won Zwimba constituents. It is very much working. And those are results. You cannot say it's not working when we won. Nine out of 13 constituencies in Matevelele North, where Zanu thought is, 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 is a stronghold. You cannot say our strategy is not working. When in Bulawa we swept 12 out of 12, despite the fact that the regime attempted to stop us from, you know, from contesting. So you cannot say our strategy is not working. Uh, uh, go and check how we performed in Harare. You know, go and even check, like, like I gave that example of that Zwimba constituents where people thought it was, a, it, was a, it was a stronghold of Zan. So the fact that people do not understand our strategy doesn't mean that it's not working. It's working. That's why Zanu is trying hard to make sure that they don't have young, eloquent, clear voices in parliament like myself, Comrade Osalos, and other young leaders in this country. It's working. They are shaken. It did not been working. Trust me, they were going to leave us in parliament. They were going to leave our councils. They were going to leave us, you know, just to be the party because they know that uh, they cannot afford to have people like us in parliament for more than 39 days because we're clear and we don't accept anything that undermines the rule of law, anything that undermines, you know, you know, you know, the lives of, of, of our people. So our strategy is very, is working so much. We're cruising nicely and we're very, we're, we're very positive of it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pasho, for that contribution and on that response this morning. Guys, for just joining us, uh, we're talking to Pasho Sibanda, uh, the aspiring triple symbol of parliament for Kautri Park. Let's go to Gondo. Uh, Gondo, I see your hand is up. We've been here for a while. Gondo, good morning. Uh, good morning. Um, I don't know if I'm audible. Yes, you are clear, sir. Please do go ahead to contribute your know, question to Pasho. All right, so firstly, I just want to say, uh, Honorable, how are you? I'm all right, my brother. How are you? I'm good. So, I beg to differ with you, Honorable, when you say uh, your strategic ambiguity thing is working because now you've actually cost, you're actually costing us money as taxpayers and, you know, doing another election. 
you guys should have had this thing sorted from the beginning. You guys should have had uh, a proper structure on top because now uh, you can't say a strategy is working when somebody that you claim to be an imposter just comes and starts recalling everybody from parliament. That's a waste of money. That's a waste of our money. And I don't think you guys um mature enough to take responsibility to say you got you know what guys we're actually messing up people's lives we're messing up people's votes because that's what you guys are doing and i i am surprised by people that take it kindly to say it's normal or that take it kindly to say okay uh we are okay with this let's just go for elections and stuff and not hold anyone accountable for the mess Right. So then um, the other thing is when you say that there is accountability when it comes to the money, who is the treasury? Who Can you just put it out there in the open? Because this is a party for us, the citizens, right? We deserve to know everything that's going on. So if a money is in a bag, who's carrying that bag and how much is it? How do you account for it? Who's responsible? We, we like, we have no idea what's going on in Triple C. All we know is that everything is centralized around Nelson Jamisa. Is he a god? What is he? Is it a cult that you guys are running? What's going on? We we need to understand these things. And guys, this thing of strategic ambiguity and stuff, it's no longer appealing to the mature votes. The only vote that you guys are attracting right now is from the guys that are just laymen on the streets. You're running on populism instead of idealism. Um, I don't know what else to say. I mean, yeah, that's that's just what I wanted to say. Thank you. Well, thank you, Gondo, for your submission. You can go ahead and respond uh, to, to the questions, uh, Pasho. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Gondo, for, the, uh, for, for, for those questions and also your contribution in terms of how you say things. Now, I, I disagree with you when you say we are responsible for taking Zimbabwe for granted. And why do I say so? These recalls are being done by ZAN. Why, why are we saying it's, it's ZAN? Look, when we founded C in 2022, we had members of parliament. What does that mean? It means that the Citizens Coalition for Change has always been in communication with parliament since its formation. Because when we had the 19 members of parliament under Triple C, you can go and check the records of parliament. We had the leader of the house. We had the chief whip. We had a member of parliament who would sit in standing rules and orders committee. Now, you cannot have a leader of the house or a chief whip or, 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 or appoint an MP to sit in the standing rules and orders of the, of, 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 uh, you know, in the standing rules and orders committee if your party is not in communication with parliament. So the question is, who has then communicating with parliament since last year, uh, 2022, on behalf of the Citizens Coalition for Change? Because when you say we don't have a structure, it appears as if this is the first time Triple C is getting into parliament. So in the ninth parliament, I can tell you this. Denda was still the, was the speaker of parliament. And President Shamisa was the president of Triple C. He was in communication with parliament. Co you know, there's been correspondences to say, look, this is coming from Triple C. We are putting so and so as the leader of the house. And parliament will accept that. Because you, when you run these things, it's, 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 it's unfortunate that most people do not understand how these things work. When you get into parliament, when you have MPs, definitely there is going to be a communication between your party and parliament. And the point which I'm trying to, 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 to drive is that we have been in communication with parliament through our president's office. In terms of who is the chief whip, who recalls, who signs for what, who does what. And Zek knows all our signatories. And the, the, the reason why we say it's ZANU, why now 
do they choose to accept a letter which comes from Sengezo when all along they've been accepting communication from President Chamisa? Why now do we have a parliament which ignores a letter from President Chamisa and acknowledges someone who is called Sengezo Chawang when we have been in communication with parliament? So that shows you or that tells you that when it comes to parliament, it's no longer an independent institution which takes decisions based on what is there before them. Because we didn't start communicating with parliament now. We communicated with parliament way back before even a, a, a lot of you here knew about Sengez Ochawa. So this is a written ZANU because they want to destabilize the, 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 the opposition. And to say that as opposition we are putting the people's lives in danger, it's wrong. It's ZANU which is undermining the will of the people. I keep saying this. ZANU PF government approved a budget of 5 million US dollars, 5 million US dollars to spend on the 9th, on 9th December by elections. So who is taking our people for granted? And how can you spend five million US dollars when we don't have, you know, meters badly, like when we don't have, uh, when our t when our civil servants do not have sufficient salaries? So let's not sugarcoat this. Let's not go around in circles. Zanu PF is taking our people for granted, and it's a fact. And uh, we can't blame the opposition for that to say because of this. Eh, 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 that's why Zanu is doing this. We're fighting an oppressor here. We're fighting a detector here. We are fighting people who don't even care about uh, the lives of people. I'll give you an example, you know, out of this discussion. You cannot tell me that in a normal country, eh, abductions continue as if it's business as usual and people are just killed as if, you know, it's, 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 it's of uh, no significance and business continues like that. That is not normal, and that is undermining, you know, the dignity of our people. So, is Zanu is responsible for the decay of this country? Is Zanu is responsible for the suffering masses of our people? We are not shifting blame, but we are there as the alternative. Where we must speak, we speak out and we point out to say, there is the problem, because we are the alternative uh, in this country. Thank you very much. Well, thanks so much, Pasho, for that response. Let's try to wrap up the space this morning. I see you've just been joined by two new speakers. Let's give the mic to Namapasha and also to Charles. I'll start with you, Namapasha. Namapasha, what's your question to Pasho this morning? <coughs> Hello, Livu and Janilonke. Hey, Sizamela <laughs> in Zimbabwe. ECCC is going to be our death. <laughs> <laughs> Uswanda, um, now I me, I love him. I wish him well. I love his eloquence. I love his confidence. What we are At times, you know, when we ask you questions that we already know the answers are out there on the internet. I wish you can be a typical politician and evade them because internet does not lie. We have heard it so many times we do not have structures. We do not have structures. So when people come and ask you to long over and long over, when you don't tell us we are human beings, we are going to make assumptions. The more you don't tell us, the more we build our own our own image. I wish at some point as CCC you can sit down and practice accountability. If you make a mistake, you make a blunder, you come in and, and apologize. We are human beings. We got it wrong. We're going to get it right. Can you stop giving Zanu the power? Zanu this, Zanu that, Zanu that is not everything is about Zan. Because as you were talking, I was just trying to think if I have been in a relationship for the past 40, 40 years. 40 years, I know all the problems, but then there is a potential of me starting a new relationship. Why would I waste my energy trying to sort out this 40 year old relationship that has never worked? I would put my energy on this one that is appears to be working, but this one is just too ambiguous. There is too much secrecy. That's why at times I think it's a curse. We don't really understand what it is. That that, that the party stands for. And I'll say it again. I mean, I'm a political orphan. I'm looking for a place to be. But the one that is promising hope was CCC. But in Fitzgerald, where you do things, I just do not understand.
understand and this chali kaniso angazi ukuthi what is the what is the issue and can you stop obsessing about izan if i can say this with izan even if it was given 100 trillion today not even a dollar is a thing as places better. So this five million ultra was paid for the uh, by election. Vele is neither here nor there. Don't even use it as a story. Is Zanu do what Zanu does? Can you learn to be accountable? Get inside your house and clean your house. Sort your issues. Don't come outside and blame Makelwane for the smell in your house. You sort it out. We know as outsiders that you had issues inside your house, but we thought you were sorting it out because you, I'm sure you don't sit down on the table and discuss issues. And then you get and then you come outside to blame the neighbor. Do not do that. I wish you well. I would love to see you as an MP. I'll be so proud of you. But your house, CCC, is dirty. It smells. Can you clean it up? Thank you. Well, thanks so much, Namapacha, for that. Pacha, do you want to respond to any of those? Yeah, yeah, we are cool with that. Way to I cool my yoga, we are swagala, a sinking water book of Bolina Condiswa. But we, 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 we still insist because uh, uh, politics it's about perceptions, it's how you, you, you view it. While I acknowledge some of the things which are which you do say, and uh, I want to put it out there that look, we are we are we are not uh, we are not in politics because we're taking advantage of what Zanu is doing. Uh, like what uh, Uta Tewet is putting you to, we should stop focusing on this. We are saying all these things about uh, uh, Zanu because our people need to know the truth. Because sometimes it's important to put it out there, the source of our problems, to say, why are we here where we are? You know, what are we doing here and uh, what caused us uh, to be here? And hence, that informs uh, our submissions, that informs our, 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 our positions, that informs on how we, 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 we try and educate uh, our people around that. Yeah, that would be my comment. Thanks so much, Pasho, for joining us this morning. But Pasho, before I let you go this morning, this debate and this buzz around where you come from, people always say, <laughs> also, also a culture park, also a you want to, please break it down for us. Wanga, Pasho, please break it down for us and break that way through the hospital. But tell us the truth, Wanga, Pasho. Yeah, Brighton. I've always been asked this question, are you Shona, are you Ndebele, are you what, where do you come from? Now, I want to set the record straight. I come from Pate uh, village uh, in Plumt, not a Kalanga community, but a Tswana community. Under Chief Chichi, Lom Lisa, Upatlane, Usopuwami, Upate, also known as... Uh, as uh, as Modise Nyati. That's where I come from. Ungafiga epaze empoenzi uti nyitinga wona ntoewe, nyitingumzu ula wona ntoewe, they will tell you to uchupasho Rafael wa Wospanda. That's where I come from. So I come from epaze empoenzi it's Mulilima Mangwe in Plumtree in Matevele and South. But I grew up uh, in 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 Couch Park. I moved to Couch Park in 1996. Uh, so figure a, a, a signpost. I a Tatekulu Primary School in Couch Park. I went to Couch Park Secondary School in Couch Park. And because there was no high school in Couch Park, then I did my A level in Popoma, the high school, and then did my first degree at the National University of Science and Technology before I did my master's degree in the University of Adga in uh, in the Scandinavia in Norway. So basically, in terms of where I come from, that's me. Thank you very much. Well, thanks so much, Pasho, for joining us this morning. Maybe last in parting words, uh, what can you say to your voters? I know I come from, I have voting culture, but actually, <laughs> what can you say to your voters come December 9th, the Bayesian Day, why should they vote for Pasho or husband again? Uh, thank you very much. To the people of Kautzbach, Ban Bagiti, we are back again. Umuntela Limbegile, Vayenzile, Ubukili, Ubukwele Kwele, Utvam Kipe, Engene for 39 days. So, Esa Wenza, 23 August, as Pinden in Jalo, Si Wenze, what December, Livege, Umeli, Okoto, Livege, Umtani, Livege, Ulita, Ozal Mela Gabushe, a situtu Yesinini, a Kautzbach here, to Livegum to Anos, Zisa Yuti, a Kautzbach, Vela Napi. Iyangapi, kunenge sifisugu wenza, 
kunenge ebe se skala uwenza e county park so hlangana in december as a vote le nusifanda pasho rafael we citizens coalition for change uta be member of parliament for county park nyabonga kakhulu gas well, thank you so much, uh, Pasho. Uh, earlier on, you spoke about uh, voter apathy. I know it's way after our time, but a message to you know all those who, who are from constituencies and wards that have uh, by elections. What is your message to them about the upcoming election? Uh, my message to the people of Kautubaki would as soon men in in December see a voter. Ugu voter. Ilo inyatela la kukala eli che insu kutu muntu uya patera ento enzo kuti ilizo la keli li, li, li ganjani. Uwege la uku vota yuguchia ilizo letu li siwa se zanjeni za wanta vanga li wambirashi. Uwege lugu ya vota yugunga vile ndawa luguti ilizo lia ngabi. Wanbagi iti ilizo lia acha ilizo li se zanjene zimbi. Ilizo letu lia balira singali ilunisa. Silla ke ngokuthi siqale siye vota hayi ukuvota kuphela kodwa siye votela upasho Rafael Sibanda abe member of parliament alimele eh akhe i county park ngendlela okumele siyakhe ngayo so asisukumeni ngo 9 December siye vota sikhulume nini iyo indlela esikhuluma ngayo iyo indlela esitshengisa ngayo ukuthi ezimbabwe eh, eh, simi kanjani ngiyaziqhenya kakhulu ngile ntokozo ninovuyo ngabantu be county park ngoba i election le Zimbabwe lonke lali se county park and wonke umuntu wabona ukuthi hayi izanu PF kayifuna kale ngokuvota ela kwenzayo ngo August ngithi kini asiphinde nini njalo abantu bayithi yawona Sebo nga pasho for joining us this morning. My name is Brighton Nube and uh, with my co-host Nong Shlama Pika. Uh, thanks so much for joining us pasho this morning and uh, uh, keep on coming uh, to this piece and giving us updates on what's happening in your constituency in the country. Thank you very much. Yeah, guys, we keep on trying to get hold of other uh, candidates who are contesting for these by-elections. We're trying to interview them uh, on the course of the week or next week uh, towards the uh, by-election. And also going to interview some of them on the Breakfast Club. So, yeah, be on the lookout for that as we keep on trying to keep you uh, these election updates, what they plan to do uh, come by-election day. Yeah, otherwise, uh, stay tuned for more of our shows. Go to our Facebook page for the Breakfast Club uh, this morning and, you know, f follow site ZW as well and Keep coming to our space, uh, you know, this morning when Asake, every weekday morning from 8.30 to 9.30. Today on The Breakfast Club, I'm sitting down with Nkungala, one of the Blauer Arts Awards organizers. I want to hear from him in terms of what's happening, the plans for the Blauer Arts Awards. They know they're happening on 25th of November. Uh, so, yeah, uh, tune in on The Breakfast Club this morning at uh, 9, 9 o'clock. Yeah, nine it's past 9 now, aren't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's already started there. Uh, so go to a Facebook page there and follow and watch that Breakfast Club interview. From myself, Brighton Mubi. And non-chan-chan-ma-bigwa. It's bye for now. now.